Hey, I'm Dr. Monsi. Today I'll discuss about a very important topic in periodontics that is aggressive periodontitis. As the name suggests, aggressive that means this type of periodontitis, the rate of destruction of periodontium is rapid. And second, you have to note that this type of periodontitis is seen in patients with less than 30 years of age, that means younger patients. So some there are some salient features of this periodontitis that makes it little different than other periodontitis like chronic periodontitis. So let's discuss about this aggressive periodontitis. There are two types of aggressive periodontitis. One is localized and generalized. Localized aggressive periodontitis was formerly classified as localized juvenile periodontitis and generalized aggressive periodontitis encompasses the disease previously classified as generalized juvenile periodontitis rapidly progressive periodontitis so in recently localized juvenile periodontitis it is known as localized aggressive periodontitis and the two term that is generalized juvenile periodontitis and rapidly progressive periodontitis they are same and known as generalized aggressive periodontitis. Now what is localized aggressive periodontitis? This type of periodontitis usually has an age of onset around puberty as I said and clinically it is characterized as having localized first molar incisor presentation with interproximal attachment loss on at least two permanent teeth one of which is a first molar and involving no more than two teeth other than first molars and incisors. So the, the this type of periodontitis is localized in first molar and incisors. There are different reasons for that I will discuss later but you have to understand the definition that you have to write in your examination and this is a very particular uh, definition that you have to remember. So I am uh, repeating again that the, it is a localized, it is localized first molar or incisor presentation with interproximal attachment loss on at least two permanent teeth, one of which is a first molar. So first molar is consistent and involving no more than two teeth other than first molars and incisors. So there is a definition of localized aggressive periodontitis. Now what is the reason that specific tooth is affected or specific area of mouth affected with this type of periodontitis? What is the reason why incisors and first molars get affected? So there are some reasons that first after initial colonization of first permanent teeth to erupt. First permanent teeth to erupt, what are the first teeth that erupts? Permanent teeth, molars, first molars and incisors. And after the eruption of these two teeth, initial colonization of actinobacillus actinomycetin committens invades the host defense by different mechanisms. What are the mechanisms? Production of polymorphonuclear leukocyte chemotaxis inhibiting factors. What PMN does? It phagocytose or kills the bacteria. But these bacteria, actinobacillus, actinomycetin committants, it invade the host defense. And what it does? It produces some factors that inhibits PMNs. Next, it releases endotoxin. This bacteria releases endotoxin, enzyme that is collagenase, leukotoxin. All these distracts the periodontium of first molars and incisors. Next what happened? After initial attack, there are immune defense will produce that will neutralize the leukotoxic activity. So after that the those tooth erupts after first molar and uh, incisors that time the body 
already recognize the pathogens and defense mechanisms improves. That's why the other teeth are not affected but the first molar and incisor that was affected by actin bacillus actin macetum committens and the distracted destruction was happened. That was one theory. And one thing you have to remember that a strong antibody response to infecting agent is one characteristic of localized aggressive periodontitis. So localized aggressive periodontitis has a strong antibody response to infecting agents. Now bacteria antagonistic to actinobacillus actinomycetin committens may colonize the periodontal tissue and inhibit actinobacillus actinomycetin committens from further colonization of periodontal sites in a mouth. This would localize actinobacillus actinomycetin committens infection tissue destruction. That means after eruption first invades this bacteria actinobacillus actinomycetin committens now what happened other bacteria has also started colonized other teeth when other teeth erupts and other bacteria they are overpower actinobacillus actinomycetin committens in other areas but in case of first molar and incisor the first invader is this bacteria actinobacillus actinomycetin committens so already destruction progressed already there is destruction or Actinobacillus actinomycetin committens overpowers there. The concentration is high in that region because at the time of eruption of first molars there was other bacteria were less. But uh, after uh, eruption of other tooth other than molars and incisors, other bacteria other than this actinobacillus actinomycetin committens produces different pathogen different toxins that is detrimental to uh, this actinobacillus actinomycetin committens. So there is a competitive nature uh, that reduce the effectiveness of this actinobacillus actinomycetin committens. So as far we discuss two theories why incisors and fast molars are affected most. First was the body's response. Actinobacillus actinomycetin committens is responsible for aggressive periodontitis, specifically localized aggressive periodontitis and ag uh, generalized also but when other teeth erupts at the time of this uh, time period of time from first molar eruption incisor eruption to other teeth eruption body's immunity develops and it produces antibodies against actinobacillus actinomycetin committens that's why other teeth are less affected or not affected and second theory is bacteria antagonistic bacteria antagonize the effect of actinobacillus actinomycetin committens later part of life. Now third, actinobacillus actinomycetin committens may lose its leukotoxin producing ability for unknown reasons. That means after some time, after some years, it loses its leukotoxic activity automatically that are the reason that other teeth are not affected and also sometimes the progression of disease automatically get arrested because of the effectiveness of actinobac actinobacillus actinomycetin committents reduce automatically sometimes now there are these theories also that uh, uh, when there is histological section uh, uh, taken from uh, cementum of first molar and incisor it was seen that the cementum is defective. So that is also maybe a reason that's why the incisors and first molars are affected. Now clinical features. Localized aggressive periodontitis clinical characteristic is very important. First thing is that it is such a kind of periodontitis that lack of clinical inflammation despite the presence of deep periodontal pockets. You can find deep periodontal pockets but you can't find or there is a lack of clinical inflammation. There is a weird condition that where you can find a deep pocket but there is inflammation is less. 
furthermore in many cases the amount of plaque on the affected teeth is minimal which seems inconsistent with the amount of periodontal destruction present that means you can find loss of attachment interproximal loss of, loss of attachment huge attachment loss but you cannot find inflammation as well as the plaque is minimal as we know that chronic periodontitis you can find abundant amount of plaque calculus but in this case localized aggressive periodontitis you will find very less plaque dental plaque the plaque that is present forms a thin biofilm on the teeth and rarely mineralized to form calculus so calculus is also not present but what is the reason for uh, this periodontitis aggressive periodontitis plaque is less but the concentration of bacteria uh, responsible for localized or generalized periodontitis that is actinobacillus actinomycetes comitans capnocytophaga these are high the concentration is high though the dental plaque is less now in this case it is a uh, this diagram you can understand that gingiva is looking healthy but periodontal pocket is there now although the quantity of plaque may be limited it often contains elevated levels of actinobacillus actinomycetes comitans and in some patients porphyromonas gingivalis i just said localized aggressive periodontitis progress rapidly the rate of bone loss is about 3 to 4 times faster than in chronic periodontitis okay so bone loss is also very fast in case of aggressive localized aggressive periodontitis 3 or 4 times faster okay then other clinical features of localized aggressive periodontitis may include distolabial migration of maxillary incisors with concomitant diastema formation there must be migration because of loss of attachment loss of bone uh, it uh, leads to a pathological migration as because of the loss of attachment bone loss uh, then uh, eventually the increasing mobility of the first molars as because of the bone loss sensitivity of denuded root surfaces to thermal and tactile stimuli and as because of the deep periodontal pocket food get lost and you can find a patient complaining that a deep dull radiating pain while mastication probably because of irritation of supporting structures by mobile teeth and impacted food the mobile teeth is mobile that is constantly irritating the supporting structures and food also getting impacted there that's why a uh, patient can find uh, dull and radiating pain so in this uh, picture in this uh, photo clinical photo you can understand the how the pathological migration occurs in fast molars a uh, sorry uh, incisors central incisors okay now clinical characteristics what more uh, what more can happen you can see periodontal abscess and regional lip node enlargement it should be noted that not all cases of localized aggressive periodontitis progress to the degree described previously that means it is not consistent that all the periodontal uh, all the localized aggressive periodontitis patients their tooth will get mobile uh, there will be abscess pathological migration that is the not the case sometimes it gets stopped or arrest automatically after some time but it is rare usually this type of periodontitis it progresses very rapidly okay like this line that in some patients the progression of attachment loss and bone loss may be self arresting now radiographic findings you can see vertical loss of alveolar bone around the first molars and incisors beginning around puberty in otherwise healthy teenagers is a classic diagnostic sign of localized aggressive periodontitis you can find arc shaped loss of alveolar bone extending from distal surface of the second molar to the mesial surface of premolar so you can see the arc shaped bone loss ha huh? in characteristic of localized aggressive periodontitis okay this is a classic presentation next gap generalized aggressive periodontitis as the name suggest it is generalized that means the definition is little bit different okay 
now it affects i'll discuss about the definition first generalized interproximal attachment loss affecting at least three permanent teeth other than first molars and incisors so in case of gap interproximal attachment loss at least three permanent teeth other than first molars and incisors there is a definition generalized aggressive periodontitis usually affects individuals under the age of 30 but older patients also may affect it in contrast to localized aggressive periodontitis evidence suggests that individuals affected with generalized aggressive periodontitis produce a poor antibody response to the pathogens present i have told already that in case of lap localized aggressive periodontitis there is a strong antibody response but in case of gap the antibody response is less and also lap is seen at the time of puberty mainly but in case of gap the age may be little greater than puberty okay that is also under 30 but older patients also may affected the destruction appears to occur episodically with periods of advanced destruction followed by stages of quiescence of variable length that means sometimes it is get arrested for few weeks few months also maybe one to two years it get arrested the clinical inflammation or the bone loss uh, or the other features pocket increasing pocket rapid destruction of periodontium that all get arrested sometimes but after sometimes it may recur destruction appears advanced destruction may happen after a period of arrest okay so this is a clinical feature of GAP now radiographs often show bone loss that has progressed since the previous evaluation though clinical uh, inflammation will be less but sometime after a few months or weeks you can you can see the bone loss progressed now as seen in LAP patient with GAP often have small amount of dental plaque associated with affected teeth quantitatively the amount of plaque seems inconsistent with the normal with the amount of periodontal destruction so plaque is less in case of GAP also and qualitatively porphyromonas gingivalis actinobacillus actinomacetim comitans and bacterioids forsythes frequently are detected in the plaque that is present okay that bacterioids forsythes i think the new name is tenarilla um, Tenerilla said, I didn't, I didn't remember. So, in case of GAP also, the specific bacteria present, Porphyrmanus gingivalis, Actinobacillus actinomycetin comitans. Now, two gingival tissue response can be found in case of generalized aggressive prodontitis. One is in case of destructive stage you can find this you can find acute inflamed tissue ulcerated proliferating fiery red bleeding may happen spontaneously suppuration may be ha may happen this is the stage of destructive stage huge amount of attachment and bone loss and the lesion is active that is a destructive stage second in other case the gingival tissues may appear pink free of inflammation and occasionally with some degree of stippling although the last feature may be absent however despite the apparently mild clinical appearance deep pockets can be demonstrated by probing the tissue response coincide with periods of quiescence in which the bone level remains stationary some patients with GAP may have systemic manifestations such as weight loss mental depression general malaise so you can find some systemic manifestation also so in this stage that is a stage of arrest you can say a stage of uh, quiescence the aggressive aggressiveness aggressive nature of the periodontitis uh, will arrest in this uh, in this stage next patient with 
presumptive diagnosis of GAP must have their medical histories updated and reviewed as because the GAP is uh, may be associated with some system <coughs> systemic disease so you have to have a, a good medical history of the patient these patients should receive medical evaluation to rule out possible systemic involvement as seen with GAP cases of as seen with LAP cases of GAP may be arrested spontaneously or after therapy whereas others may continue to progress inexorably to tooth loss despite intervention with conventional treatment I will discuss the treatment part also so in this slide it is said that conventional treatment that means root planning scaling patient motivation despite all of these sometime the disease progress and finally tooth may get lost radiographic features that is also radiographic features in GAP can range from severe bone loss associated with the minimal number of teeth as you described previously to advanced bone loss affecting a majority of teeth in the dentition despite this extreme loss other sites in the same patient showed no bone loss only the teeth that gets affected with the aggressive periodontitis only the teeth you can see the bone loss but the same patients other areas you can see the normal pattern of bone so some risk factors are there for aggressive periodontitis first microbiological factors that i already discussed actinobacillus actinoacetin committants is it is proved that this type of periodontitis is caused by actinobacillus actinoacetin committants mainly so there is a microbiological factor second immunological factor is there there are some immunological like HLA A9 B15 antigens are consistently associated with aggressive periodontitis third point HLA A9 and B15 antigens are consistently associated with aggressive periodontitis so there are some immunologic factors also and as I discussed earlier that there is a defect in PMN also hmm, that may be a cause of this type of aggressive periodontitis because PMN what is, uh, what is the function of PMNs phagocytosis killing bacteria but in case of defects in chemotaxis of PMNs the phagocytosis and the killing effect will get affected so this is this, th that may be the reason of this type of periodontitis okay now autoimmunity uh, genetic factor there are several studies support the concept that all individuals are not equally susceptible to aggressive periodontitis there must be some genetic factor presence in case of this type of periodontitis now there are environmental factors mainly spoke smoking it is seen that smoking can deteriorate the patient's condition and more teeth may get affected with uh, this type of uh, periodontitis so smoke smoking may be a factor environmental factor now you can see in rapidly progressive adult periodontitis in a 29 year old patient we can see the pattern now that is also juvenile periodontitis a 19 year old patient affecting molar other teeth are normal but molar you can see the change of gingival contour now this is also example of LJP you can see the distal labial migration of central incisor these are the bone destruction pattern or pattern of bone loss horizontal not horizontal vertical bone loss you can see angular bone loss or arc separate bone loss you can see in the molar as well as incisor region lingual view of the left mandibular molar are in a patient with juvenile periodontitis you can see the gingiva it looks uh, normal but the pocket is deep here you can find that how the bone loss happen after flap elevation so I'll now discuss about a little bit I uh, discuss about the uh, treatment of the, this type of aggressive periodontitis uh, there are two type of uh, treatment you can say that is 
a conventional treatment conventional means patient uh, modi uh, patient education motivation and oral hygiene maintenance and scaling root planning and these are the conventional treatment sometimes conventional treatments the response is well but unfortunately conventional uh, conventional uh, treatment is not uh, uh, enough for this type of periodontitis so you have to sometime you have to go for surgical options surgical resection regenerative surgeries many studies shows that regenerative surgeries are uh, good for this type of conditions but you have to of course you have to uh, uh, make sure that prognosis uh, you have to uh, determine the prognosis before uh, surgery because sometimes it is seen that surgery is detrimental for this type of periodontitis sometimes a tooth get uh, more mo mobile after surgery so you have to see the indications or feasibility of surgery also uh, then as because of there is pathogenic bacteria is responsible for this type of periodontitis so you can think about antimicrobial therapy there is tetracycline systemic or doxycycline systemic therapy and local drug delivery system local uh, chips of tetracycline metronidazole you can give local drug delivery systems you can use in this type of uh, periodontitis then you can think about full mouth uh, disinfection that one one uh, uh, concept is there full mouth disinfection um, within 24 hours you have to uh, scale you have to completely you have to done uh, you have to do scaling root planning and you have to scrape the tongue with 1% of chloroxidine you have to rinse in the periodontal pocket with 0.2% of chloroxidine and also uh, you have to give 2% uh, sorry 0.2% chloroxidine mouthwash to patient for 2 minutes so this is the procedure of disinfection and along with that you can uh, one type of one type of uh, uh, therapy that is uh, you know, recently uh, that is uh, um, uh, very interesting or novel approach that is the host modulation uh, you can prescribe patient sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline it is seen that this sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline can inhibit collagen destruction or the periodontal destruction huh? so it inhibits actually collagenase uh, enzyme or other enzymes that are detrimental for the destruction of uh, collagen or other uh, uh, periodontal tissues so these are the protocols for treatment conventional surgery then full mouth disinfection systemic or local antimicrobial therapy then host modulation with sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline thank you very much for patience listening we'll see you in next video